Hi everyone, our journal page today and I'm going to use just scraps of painting paper that I have. I just want to <laughs> get rid of it. It's just uh, laying around all over and it's a really uh, fun and easy uh, project to do. So here is not thinking about it, just going and taking pieces and starting to glue them all over your page randomly, not overthinking. Now I'm. This is uh, my the art journal that I made from a two hundred and forty gram paper. It's back to back, very easy, no stitching, and as you can see, these are leftover from other project. I even think that this one is from a page I've already showed you this one here we go leftover so I'm just going to put down pieces randomly I want everything to just be glued here and as I said not overthinking it I don't want <laughs> more stashes of paper just getting too much as you can see I'm going about it quite quickly especially the pieces that are already cut and we'll see what happens I'm, I'm not concerned about the shape I'm not concerned about the edges I'm not concerned about anything uh, here I punched a flower, here it's torn, here it's <laughs> with a straight edge, I don't care. All the scraps are just going to be on the page. Really doesn't matter. This is what this kind of a project is more intuitive and you never know what will come out of it and it's really fun you are always left with small pieces from other projects and you don't quite know how, <laughs> where and how to use them they are small they are with all kinds of various shapes but you can't get yourself to throw them away, so <laughs> that's what's going on. You see, there is no reason to how I'm uh, putting them. Let's take some purple. Just so I will have something more to play with. Seems I haven't put enough glue in some of the edges. What's going on here? Doesn't want to stick. Okay, so continuing. The only thing I do try to do is putting something like if I have this paper, the purple one, I want to put it in various uh, areas of my page. Otherwise, I really don't care. Let's see. Let's take another one. Now most of it is going to get covered, I'm telling you in advance, so don't get attached to it. Of course, if you don't like to use a glue stick, you can use white glue. I thought it would be easier not waiting for everything to get dry. 
Now I'm not sure. Some of the paper is giving me trouble. But I'm going to just continue. Okay. Do I want more? I'm not sure. <laughs> And still, as you can see, I still have lots of leftovers here. We'll see what I'll do with them. Right now, I think that's all I'm going to put on this page. Okay. Oh, here is another small piece. Let's use it. Here we go. Moving this aside, I'm moving on and taking white gesso let's put some here this is real thick gesso okay someone asked me uh, some time ago which gesso it is this one is cadence okay so i'm going to use uh, it as is right now just to go in between the pieces like so as if I'm framing each piece with gesso and I'm also going over the edges it's like you are blending each piece into the white background now I'm also going to go over the pieces with diluted white gesso because I'm going to push back the details this is just a start to the page it's kind of I don't know what to call it it's a crazy background but that's the fun of it because you never know what you will get and it's the, just the foundation. Of course, if you have a little piece left over uh, from other project and you think it's a masterpiece, then don't use it. But I've learned to not get attached to all the scraps. It just... <laughs> You just find yourself under piles of paper. Okay. So it's going to take a little bit of time to go over. But it's worth it. Now you don't have to use your finger. You can take a soft brush and just go over the pieces up to you just i like to do it this way i feel it's i have a little bit more control i don't know why just is so as you can see already just some of the pieces are picking through and also like everything here is random you can decide what you want to cover and what not if you don't want to cover something like here don't cover it do whatever feels right to you this i don't know if to call it a technique but this worked for me before just going around the pieces and blending them and just letting go whatever it will be will be remember it's just scraps of paper have fun with it
Okay, let's see. Maybe here also. Looks like a mess, but I think that it's just it's just the beginning and most of the pages, most of mixed media pages start with a mess. And for me, it, it, this is just fun. Okay, so I have this and I'm thinking that before I'm going all over with the diluted gesso, I want more details. I can stencil or a stamp, whatever, all kinds of stuff that can be done. I'm going to take some tissue paper and I think I, glue, I will glue some tissue paper on top. I made a video uh, some time ago about this binder with tissue paper, how to make all kinds of tissue paper instead of buying because like this one is a Tim Holtz. I got it in um, Happy Mail. This one is from Flying Tiger. But most of the time I don't have... It's not accessible uh, to me. So I'm just making my own tissue paper. I think I will go with this because I've got all kinds of stuff going on here. This this is made from a stenc two stencils I have. And as you can see, I just stand still all over the tissue paper so i'm going to take some pieces and again quite randomly i'm going to glue them to my page on top of what i've got here and let's see just white glue not even waiting for the gesso to dry Here we go. So as I said, I could have stenciled on top, but I already have the tissue paper. So that's what I'm using. Okay. Mm. Again, quite random. And let's see. You can pick whatever you like. It doesn't have to be numbers and letters or whatever. Just adding details as i said you can stencil you can stamp do i want more maybe okay a little bit piece here and one more piece i think here and it's still looking like a mess okay finished with this now I'm going to dilute my gesso and go all over the page once again I'm not even uh, waiting for the glue to dry I don't care the the worst case scenario I will have crackle effect of the gesso on top of the glue that's what happens in, when you put uh, glue on top of gesso on top of glue that didn't dry of course it depends on the amount of glue amount of gesso and how <laughs> and how dry uh, it is okay so as you can see i'm uh, diluting my gesso going over very quickly and i'm starting with a lot of water and uh, so it it won't cover everything just push it back if i don't like it i can always 
add more gesso and push the background more but I uh, mostly I can't remove while it's still wet I can take a baby wipe and remove if I don't like something but it's better to go easy like if I think this is too prominent on the page I can go over it with more again I can push it back more I don't like it it's still wet I can take a baby wipe and dab lightly and take something like this you see very easy play with it have fun with what's showing and what's not and I can still cover areas with the gesso if I don't like an area no rules and my the best advice that I can give you is to just let go whatever will be will be it's scraps of paper so now I uh, I do need for all of this to to dry and when it's dry I'll come back okay so now we are going to add paint uh, on top and lots of uh, ways to go about it you can use watercolors you can use uh, brushes you can use sprays you can use your distress ink the only thing that matters is what you like what you have you can mix them all I'm going to show you I'm going to start with I think I will start with the brushes I'm taking the purple and um, if you don't have brushes if it's not accessible to you the only thing that I found that is similar not exact thing similar is a um, text a uh, powder textile dye all this that I have here in these containers are powdered textile dyes and these ones the white ones these are the brushes so I can go about it with brushes just sprinkle a little bit and of course you need to activate it with water I can use a spray bottle a mist one like so I can take a brush if I feel more like it that I am more in control it's really up to you what you like like so I can decide that I prefer watercolors you can take um, even acrylic paint diluted in water and just let it let it spread let it do it th its thing <laughs> that's the best uh, advice I can give you of course if you like more control go for it I'm just having fun spreading it all over don't much care where it goes I want it to spread that's the only thing that I really want so that's a uh, watercolors you can even uh, use distress inks if you feel like this is the color that you want and you only have it with distress inks so put it on some uh, non porous surface spray it again you can pick it up with a brush or you can just take it and flip it over as you can see I'm ha just having fun with it and sprays of course again you can spray or if you want more control you can just open the bottle and use again 
a brush. Really up to you what you like. Okay, so let's see. That's all I wanted to demonstrate, but I really like the purple here. So I think I'm going to put just a little bit more purple in several places. What I love uh, about brushes is that they have all kinds of uh, pigment particles in each powder. So I mostly it's purple but there are like red particles in the powder sometimes more than uh, two colors and it makes it really interesting so as you can see I'm just playing I'm taking now the scarlet I don't know why I'm just <laughs> It's really intuitive, nothing is planned. I'm just using what I have. I'm using the brush to activate and the spray to help it spread. And if I don't like something, I can always take the baby wipe and just take a little bit out of if it's too much, like so. And I have another spray here. Not a great spray, but nonetheless, it's another thing that just adding to the whole. I'm not <laughs> sure how to explain it. <laughs> and I know it still looks like a mess, but I like it. It's just work in progress. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. Sometimes it doesn't, uh, uh, when paint dries it doesn't matter if it's the sprays if it's the watercolors or the brushes it's a little bit more faded so i'm letting this dry so i can see what's going on and then i'm going to continue working on this piece i'll be back okay so this is dry and i want to still work on this background I'm going to use all kinds. I've got Posca pens, I've got a Uniball Signal white marker and something with no brand that I picked up white. It doesn't have to be a Posca pens or anything. You can use, you can stencil, you can stamp on it, anything you want. And I'm just going to start with making marks. Let's see just so it works and it's still quite random just making some kind of dots and as i said this is random and But once again, I'm spreading it so it won't be in just one place. Some of the paper is still moist, so I'm having trouble with <laughs> the Posca pen. And let's see. Something like that, and I think I'll just take the white and go 
let's see of course it doesn't work when you want it to work it just that's how it goes with all those white markers and it really doesn't uh, matter the brand let's switch okay before i could get my hands in the past on posca pens or any kind of markers white markers i used a correction fluid just an idea for you if it's also not accessible for you still a little bit moist everything which making it a little bit difficult to to do seems like i don't have enough patience for everything to dry Well, maybe I will add the white later on where it's it's still wet. Okay, let's see how this light blue works and just creating another a uh, marker, some marks, not marker. <laughs> I'm just having fun. All this is random, not overthinking it. Having fun, putting down something, whatever will be, will be. You don't like it, cover it. <laughs> In some areas it's less noticeable. I don't care. I'm just continuing. Okay, I think I'm done with the marks. I just feel like I want some uh, like text in the back. So I'm going to find some stamp. I don't really care what it's saying. I just want something in the back. And let's take... I have Momento Tuxedo Black ink pad and let's take, I don't know, one of these. It doesn't want to peel. Okay, managed it. Okay. Yeah, just having fun. Okay, now I'm happy with this and I want to do some focal image. I am thinking a flower or something and let's see. 
haven't prepared anything in advance, but I'm thinking I'm to use one of, one of the stencils I have. Let's see. I've got this stencil and I've got this one. Not sure which to use. I think I'll uh, use this one. Yeah. I'm going to put it here and take some black acrylic paint. I can remove the towel now that I'm finished with all the water. And let's take makeup sponge. Okay, so I'm thinking it's going to be here. Some of it is masked because I only want the, this flower from the stencil. So I'm taking acrylic paint, dabbing the excess and going easy with it. I've got texture underneath with all the pieces of paper that I've glued so it won't be easy. but I can always, if it's not a great, I don't know what to call it, print, then I can always take a black permanent marker and do some fixing. Right now, uh, I'm already thinking, let's lift it, yeah. I'm thinking that I will use some marker to go and do a contour line or at least in some places if it's with white or with gold I'm not sure yet uh, just highlights that will make my focal points stand out more on this background. Oh, I like it. Turned out better than I thought. <laughs> okay, I just feel like I need some base here for my flower. I'm going to bring some washi tape. Just, let's see, something that won't overwhelm. Okay, let's see. Mm. Where the heck is the... <laughs> Can't find it. Okay, here it is. Day. <laughs> and maybe one more.
It's crooked. Nope. Don't like it. Let's see. Don't like the pink. Go away, pink. Sometimes I get stuck on the little details. What can you do? Okay, got my base. I'm feeling like I need a butterfly here. That means that I need to find either a, a stamp or a stencil. Let's see. Okay, I've got lots of uh, butterfly stamps, so it would be easier. Maybe more than one butterfly. Here we go. Again. Pushing it and letting it sit for a few seconds just so the ink will absorb. Yeah, here it is. Great, I like it, I love it. Maybe another one here. Yeah, and one more here. Oh, I'm in love. Okay. <laughs> I think this is it. I think I'm leaving it as is, not touching anything. Maybe just, as I said, putting a, a little bit more white where it didn't work before. Still moist okay I thought about as I said a contour line I'm not sure maybe leave it be <laughs> I really don't know yeah I'm going to leave it be maybe if it will bother me uh, later on I will add Right now, I'm leaving this page as is. I'm going to bring it uh, closer to the camera. I really want you to see all the details that are in the back that are still uh, coming through the layers. And remember, we just started this page with scraps of paper. Here we go. So, so that's it for today thank you for watching thank you for leaving me comments down below i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now